Okay, let's now handle the case of deriving a vector with respect to a vector. Suppose you have a vector r that has two components, r1 and r2. But this component right here is a function of x1, x2, and x3, while this component right here is also a function of x1, x2, and x3. So you can imagine having another vector v, where this vector v is equal to or has three components, x1, x2, and x3. So now you can say that r is a vector having r1, but r1 is a function of another vector v, like this, and r2 is also a function of another vector v, of the same vector v, and you want to take the derivative dr as a vector with respect to this v as a vector. Well, let's think about that. Those two components right here are known to be independent of each other. And so if I want to know how does the vector r change if the vector v changes, I need to know how does every component of the vector r change as the vector v changes. So I really expect this to be equal to dr by dv. I expect this to be equal to or to have two components here. Here I have dr1 by dv as a vector and here I have dr2 by dv as a vector, right? So I expect this to be in a form similar to this. Of course, it might be a column or might be a row, but I expect it to have those two components. Now, what is the dimension of every one of those two components right here? Remember, this is a scalar, so I am getting the derivative of a scalar with respect to a vector. But we know from earlier that this is actually written as a row vector. So this can be written as, the first component can be written as dr1 by dx1, dr1 by dx2, and dr1 by dx3. Remember, the vector v is equal to x1, x2, x3. Now, for the second component here, dr2 by dx1, dr2 by dx2, and dr2 by dx3. So, this turns out to be a matrix. So, the derivative of a vector with respect to a vector will turn out to be a matrix. Now, before we proceed, let's check that this is really correct. Suppose we want to get the dr, the dr itself. I know that dr as a vector is equal to dr1 and dr2. Now, this should be equal to this matrix right here multiplied by dv. So, dv is equal to dx1, dx2, and dx3. Here I have dr1 by dx1, dr1 by dx2, and dr1 by dx3. Here I have dr2 by dx1, dr2 by dx2, and dr2 by dx3. Now let's expand this. So we have dr1 being equal to dr1 by dx1 multiplied by dx1 plus dr1 by dx2 multiplied by dx2 plus dr1 by dx3 multiplied by dx3, which sounds correct. Similarly, for dr2, you will find also that the expansion looks correct, and so this matrix right here is a very acceptable representation for dr by dv, for the derivative of a vector with respect to a vector. Now, in general, this matrix right here will be of a dimension of m by n. So, if the original vector r was an m by 1 vector, here m is equal to 2, and the original vector v was equal to n by 1, then this matrix right here will be of a dimension of m multiplied by n. And in general, this won't be a square matrix. This matrix is actually called the Jacobian, the Jacobian matrix. And we will talk about the Jacobian matrix again later in the section when you talk about the determinant of the Jacobian matrix and linear transformation and its relation to double integrations and triple integrations and so on. So we will come back to this again and we will find out that actually this matrix has more meaning than just being a table for putting our derivative inside of it. Again, some other books define the Jacobian to be the transpose of this matrix but I will stick with this representation for this section. So in general, I have dr being equal to 
Here I have the gradient of R1 with respect to the vector V, and here I have the gradient of R2 with respect to the vector V, and before we define the gradient to be a row vector instead of a column vector, and so this seems natural, so this is equal to dr by dv. Finally, let's take a simple example. Suppose you have the vector r being equal to r1 and r2, but now you know that r1 is actually equal to x1 squared plus 3x2, and r2 being equal to, let's say, e to the power of x. 3, maybe. So this is R1 and R2, and I want dr by dv, where v is the vector of x1, x2, x3, and now I know that this will be a matrix, a 2 by 3 matrix. Here I have dr1 by dx1, which is equal to 2x1. Here I have dr1 by dx2, which is equal to 3. Here I have a 0. Here I have dr2 by dx1, which is 0, dr2 by dx2, which is also 0, and here I have e to the power of x.